My name's Fred. Um, as he mentioned, I uh, run WP Shout and PressUp. Okay, we're talking about technical communication. What is that? It's explaining hard things to humans, and we're going to break down each piece of that. Hold on, I'm actually taller than this. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> That feel when you're too tall for that. Okay, all right, so hard things to humans. Explaining hard things to humans. What are hard things? They're things that take a lot of specific technical knowledge. Knowledge that is basically unrelated to human intuition. So, you know, if you were traveling to a new country and somebody said, oh, you know, just be your normal self, but maybe be a little bit quieter, that's considered polite. That's sort of, that's got a lot of human intuition in it. That's not technical. But if somebody said, yeah, just write a WP, custom WP query, unless you know the exact nature of how to do that, you don't, under, you, you, you don't know where to start. That's technical knowledge. It basically has no relationship to human uh, intuition. Explaining, what does this mean? It means conveying knowledge effectively enough that a specific goal is achieved. So people need information to be able to do things. Now for, for a coworker, they might need to know everything you know about a, a particular topic. But for a client, the goal might be um, just that they have enough general information to have the intuition they need to make a decision. So explaining means that you, you solved somebody's problem, whatever the nature of that problem. Who are humans? Well, uh, they're imperfectly rational. Um, they learn differently. They don't like to feel like the only person in the room who doesn't know what's going on. They don't like to be talked down to. And uh, not only is the person you need to explain stuff to a human, but you yourself are a human. Um, and that's, that's the tricky part. So, uh, and then why does technical communication matter? Well, again, you know, we mentioned goals, right? My cousin says he can totally build this site with Yahoo's free page builder. In language I can understand, tell me why I should pay you any money to do it, right? I mean, goals, if you want to get this guy on as a client, which you maybe don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know. WordPress sounds great for this project, but my boss is really worried. Don't people say, isn't WordPress easy to hack, right? Hey, I bought your premium plugin, but I want my money back. I hate your documentation. I can't understand a word of it. Okay, so what is technical knowledge? Well, we're going to use an analogy here. Technical knowledge is like being on a hill. I actually uh, found a picture of a hill. Here's the hill, and I'm going to sort of diagram it out for you. So here's you, right, at the top of the hill. From the top of the hill, you can see a view, right? There's the hill that you climbed to get to the top. And then the sort of default before you climb the hill is the valley, and that's where most people live, and they are, of course, the valley people. So the hill and you. Getting up the hill took effort. Right? It, it, it's not a trivial process. You had to walk every step of it up from the valley where we all start up to the top. But now that you're up there, there's an amazing view. You can see and do all kinds of cool stuff. You can see the weather forming a thousand miles away. You have superpowers, basically. And those, that stuff you can do, the, the stuff that the view enables you to do, you're passionate about. That's why you climbed the hill in the first place. Now, the valley. Well, it's a wonderful place to be. For any piece of technical knowledge, like 99% of people are in the valley, right? So it's, it's the default. Um, the only thing is the valley sometimes needs hilltop information. And that could mean you either need to provide instructions for climbing the hill, or a lot more commonly, you need to provide a report from the top of the hill describing the view in language that valley people can understand. Uh, why is this difficult? Well, gaps in knowledge. And one thing I want to point out is that we sometimes treat gaps in knowledge like there's just specific pieces of information that people need. But th the way that gaps in knowledge chunk together is that eventually there are entire contexts, just whole sort of domains of information that are separating you and the people you need to communicate with. So it's not like, oh, if I could just communicate these 10 facts. It's more like if I could communicate the underlying sort of knowledge base, then I could even co communicate the 10 facts. And here's an example, right? Hey, look, the permafrost is thinning on the peaks of the Western mountain range. Down in the valley, they're thinking, okay, permafrost, peaks, mountain range, right? They have no idea what you're talking about. What does this uh, lead to in, in sort of the, the worst case? It leads to attitude problems. And what I'm talking about is attitude problems that you have as a technical person. The first one is arrogance. I am actually only interested in speaking to other people on this particular hilltop, right? What does this look like? Arrogance. Have, has anybody ever found a, talked to an arrogant developer? <laughs> I won't even do the show of hands. <laughs> won't even do it. Curt, standoffish, they don't want to talk to you. You're a waste, you know, you're, you're taking their precious time. They refuse to put stuff into terms that you'll understand. They sort of have these little uh, tests that they make you pass. I mean, do you know Node? I mean, do you know, do you know it? Like as an accusation, right? They make you feel like an imposter, right? And they don't care whether you understand them or not because they know they're right and whether you can get with that or not, who cares? So a rock star, right? 
That's, that's kind of arrogance personified and given a guitar. Okay, now where does arrogance come from? Well, sometimes, you know, bad manners, but more often it's that people, uh, you know, love clarity, they love the view, right? And you, who have no ability to understand that, that view, are just sort of bringing confusion into their whole thing. Um, why would I try to explain this knowledge that it cost me a lot to acquire to, to people who have no context for it, right? Then the second attitude problem is called breeziness. What is breeziness? It's so easy to get up here. Actually, I'm just going to assume that you're up here with me anyway. Now, let's talk about the view in extreme detail, right? Breeziness. You're trying to pretend that gaps in knowledge don't exist. And, and so you exceed other people's ability to learn. You uh, use way too much tacit knowledge, which is background knowledge that people need to understand what you're talking about, that you assume they have that, in fact, they may not. You know? So you sail over other people's heads, you skip the basics and you dive right into the, to the stuff that you want to talk about, that you think is cool. And you're constantly going, this is so easy, this is so simple, this is so logical, right? But it's, I mean, it is to you, right? The, the, the view is so cool, it's sitting right there and it's this awesome thing to you. But remember, only you can see it and it costs you a lot. It took a lot of climbing to get there and you're kind of ignoring this fact and that's what I'm calling breeziness. So the basic problem in both cases, I believe, is that you're blinded by the view. It's so cool, it's beautiful, right? And, and, that, and that focus on what you know, um, as opposed to what other people need to learn, is becoming an impediment to communication. Your knowledge is so important to you that you can't properly communicate that knowledge to people who need elements of it. Okay, so those are what to avoid. Now, what can we do instead? Well, I, I think there's the two things are really helpful to keep in mind if you want to communicate technical knowledge effectively. The first thing is that your communication should be audience aware. The second is that it, sh it should be strategic. And we're going to talk about both of these. Audience aware communication means start where your audience is. Reason carefully and without bias about what is likely to be the extent of the technical knowledge of the people you're talking to. And then communicate in a way that reflects that understanding and actually respects where people are, are at and uh, doesn't wish they were you know, somewhere else. Um, and here are a few strategies for this. One is to use analogies, right? Analogies like the hilltop analogy that we're using. It, it phrases your own understanding in terms of other people's understanding. It's, a, it's sort of a form of translation. And it can be so valuable in getting the key points of a, of a piece of technical knowledge across. Right? So how does WordPress work? Here are two examples, one without an analogy and one with. Well, WordPress stores posts and other data in its MySQL database and uses a PA. I can't, I don't have time to finish all this, but it means nothing to like 100% of human beings, right? And then number two, WordPress is like a factory that builds web pages. The database is like the warehouse where the raw materials sit. And then they, they come through a factory and that's what the PHP processing is. And then you've got a theme and that's, that's all the assembly lines that the raw materials go down. You know, maybe there's a page assembly line and a single assembly line and an index assembly line and that's your theme and then sometimes we need stuff that the factory can't do by default and then we call in outside contractors and those are called plugins you know I mean in 20 seconds somebody has a decent idea of what WordPress is with none of the specifics which is what you want okay another thing you can do to um, uh, be audience aware is uh, to actually list out the knowledge that, that what you're saying depends on. You remember, tacit knowledge is basically how you communicate breezy, breezily, with breeziness here being like a really bad thing, right? So how far up the hill are we starting? And if we're not starting at the bottom, at the valley where everybody is, what can I, the listener, do to get up to the starting point? You know, you don't want to just start, you don't want to just be like, oh, great, now that you're 1,000 feet, here's how you get to 1,800 where the hilltop is, right? You want to say, this is how you get from zero to 1,000. So this, again, I don't have time to read it, but this is the, like, what hits you when you go to, like, the introduction for noobs page of Grunt, right? And for me, it's like, I, I just bounce off this. It's like, Grunt's not for me, right? How, how about, like, an intro to using the command line for people who, you know, who aren't where they need to be to, to use Grunt but would like to be, right? Okay, so that's audience aware communication. Now, strategic communication. That means, once again, t tie your communication back to the goal of it. You know, people need to know your knowledge, not for no reason, but for some reason. And you want to actually reason about what, is, what, what do people need to know, and you want to tailor your communication to that, right? So let's say a client is asking you what's WordPress. The first thing is uh, just the Wikipedia description of WordPress. It's a free and open source, blah, 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 right? But the second thing is... WordPress makes it really easy for you to use your website. And guess what? It also makes it quick and easy for us to build that website. And uh, if you'd like to know the specifics, we'd be happy to explain it. 
Like I, as a client, it's like, yeah, I want that. I would love to pay for that. And if I have questions, I have a lot of confidence that, you know, that you can give me, you know, more, but maybe this is all I need to know to be like, great, you're hired. Right. So this is strategic communication. It's sensitive to the reason that you're communicating in the first place. Um, and actually this can do a lot for your writing. Uh, I, there's a couple examples that I'm going to go through very, very quickly, but like, here's one, basically a conditional tag is just a function that how about just a conditional tag is a function that, right? Because our purpose is to explain something, not to emphasize how easy the thing we're explaining is. And so those, those two words, they're not strategic, so they're gone. And I'll skip this one, sort of a similar principle. But this is actually in the WordPress, uh, um, like this is in WordPress. Success, WordPress has been installed. Were you expecting more steps? Sorry to disappoint. And uh, how about success, WordPress has been installed. Thank you and enjoy. Because again, our purpose is, what's our purpose? Is it to make people feel kind of snarky about how easy WordPress is? It's like, that makes no sense. Like what if the person had a hard time installing WordPress like I did the first 10 times, right? <laughs> I mean, it's not very strategic. So that's, that's my little plug for overhauling the way that WordPress is sometimes written. Anyway, okay, so to sum up, don't be arrogant, meaning don't treat gaps in knowledge as, like, as an insult, something that's been done to you that you have a super bad attitude about because you're an awesome technical, like that's arrogant, don't do that. And don't be breezy, meaning don't pretend gaps in knowledge don't exist, right? Those are, those are two uh, no-nos in actually communicating to other human beings. And do be audience aware and strategic. Audience aware means what is the knowledge level of the people I'm talking to and how can I communicate in a way that respects that? And strategic means why are we having this conversation in the first place? What is this leading to and how can I tailor my communication to that? Okay, and then this is a final note just on, on empathy. You can, you can do all this pretty well and still not be very nice. And when you're not nice, you kind of put people on edge and uh, people who are on edge, tense people, tend to have a hard time learning. So here are, here's how to have empathy in two very simple hacks, um, which is a, a I, I'm turning into a BuzzFeed article after this, so look out for that. But um, okay, so when you're speaking, smile as you talk and uh, see, see if anything changes if you just sort of physically smile as you talk. And if you're writing, put a little smiley face after every paragraph and delete or rework anything that sounds sarcastic. And uh, boom, empathy acquired. Okay, guys, so that's communicating technical knowledge, um, and th that's how to be on the hill and help the people in the valley either get up the hill or learn, you know, uh, the elements of the view that they need to live their happy lives in the valley. Thank you so much.